Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through a couple NFL props I like on prize picks this week for the week three uh, main slate for the Sunday slate of games. Um, I do have three picks that I'm going to share in this video for you guys. Um, took a look at the board, you know, the full Sunday board, and I don't usually give out more than like, you know, three or four plays. I'm usually trying to narrow it down to like my favorite three to four plays, you know, kind of taking a first look at the board. And I got three plays to share with you guys. So uh, before we do get started talking through our plays for this week three slate, we can recap our plays that we gave out in our last video, which was for Thursday Night Football. And man, we finally, finally got a damn win. It's been, it's been a tough NFL season, at least to start the year. But week three, we did start off on a good note. We gave out two picks for Thursday Night Football for the uh, Steelers and Browns game, and we cashed both of our two picks. We took the over on Deontay Johnson's receptions, took that over five and a half, and I think he finished with, uh, with seven receptions. And then we took Kareem Hunt to have over two receptions, and he finished with three. So luckily, man, we, we got off to a good start for week three, and let's you know, try and keep it up for the for this Sunday slate. Um, we're going to talk through our three picks for today, guys, just real quickly before we do. Hit that like button if you guys do enjoy these Prize 6 videos and if they do help you out a lot. Hit that subscribe button as well if you are new here. We did recently just hit 29,000 subscribers. Thank you all to you know all of you guys who have come to the channel, checked out the channel, hit that subscribe button. I do greatly appreciate it. Now we're on the uh, we're on the road to 30,000 subscribers. You know, it's uh, definitely a, a big milestone that, I, that I'm looking to hit soon. Um, if you guys have not hit that subscribe button yet, make sure to do so. And also, if you have not checked out Prize Picks, you can actually check them out and sign up with my promo code, promo code Noah. Uh, when you do sign up with my promo code, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. And for any of you that are new here that have maybe never checked out Prize Picks before, they're pretty much a player prop based DFS site, so it is really simple. You're just picking the over or the under. Um, you're taking more or less on a player's projection. They have a lot of projections, a lot of props up for a bunch of different categories, and they're going to add probably even more props as we get closer to the game, to, to the start of the games on Sunday. Uh, right now, I'm making this video on Friday night, and I'm going to upload it to YouTube on Saturday. Um, but yeah, check out Prospects, man. If you guys have not signed up for Prospects yet, use code NOAA, get your deposit bonus when you sign up, and you know, take a look at all the props that they have available uh, for Sunday slate. But let's talk through the plays I like for Sunday, guys. Um, we got three picks, and we're going to talk about two fantasy score props that I like, and then we're going to talk about a receiving yards prop that I like for today. Uh, all three of the picks I'm liking are coming from the 1 o'clock games. Um, so, you know, I did look at some of the 4 o'clock games. I didn't see a ton that I loved in the 4 o'clock games, but if I do find any more picks I like, and usually I will be able to find some more picks, I do share those over on Patreon. So if you guys do want to get more prize picks plays from me, check out the Patreon. Link down below in the description. You can get all of my prize picks plays. Get in our Discord chat. You can get all of my DFS content as well. Um, that's all available for Patreon members. Um, if you're interested in that, you know it's always linked down below in the description. But the first prop that I like for Sunday is going to be Joe Mixon. We're going to be taking Joe Mixon to have more than 17 and a half fantasy points this week. And I really like this line at 17 and a half. I think this line could definitely be a few points higher, especially for this matchup here going up against the Jets. I think this is a really good spot for the Bengals. I think this is one of those spots where we could definitely see the Bengals put up a lot of points this week. Right now, I think the, the Bengals are favored by six in this game. This game has a uh, 45 total, and the Bengals have a 25 and a half implied team total. So you know, Vegas, is, Vegas is expecting the Bengals to score at least three to four touchdowns this week. I think there's definitely a good chance that you know, Joe Mixon could be one of those guys, you know, could score one of those touchdowns, if not two. Uh, Mixon has yet to find the end zone this season, but he's been getting a ton of volume, and that's what really makes me like this prop. So in week one, Joe Mixon uh, got 34 touches. He had 27 carries for 82 yards, and he had nine targets, seven catches for 63 yards. Last week was not a great week for Joe Mixon, but he still got really good volume. 19 carries for 57 yards, and then he saw four targets, uh, three catches for 26 yards. They've been using the Bengals. They've been using Joe Mixon as a true bell cow back so far this season. Uh, weeks uh, week one and two, he played on 73% of the snaps, and then last week 76% of the snaps. So he's getting you know he's going to play 70 to 80% of the snaps. He's going to be on the field for you know a large majority of the game, even if you know by some chance this game goes south and the Bengals get behind. Like obviously that's pretty unlikely to happen, but if the Bengals are trailing in this game. Um, we know Joe Mixon will be involved in the passing game. They'll throw a bunch of dump offs to him, a bunch of screen plays. And obviously with prize picks, fantasy scoring being full PPR, you do want to try and get running backs that can catch passes because that just makes their floor and ceiling so much higher. Uh, but Mixon's going to get the volume. It's a really good matchup. The Jets were really bad against the run last season. Uh, last year, the Jets, they actually did allow the most fantasy points to opposing running backs, and it wasn't even close. They, actually, they allowed three more fantasy points than the next, than the next team, which was the Lions. Um, they also allowed the fourth most rushing yards to opposing running backs, and they allowed the most rushing touchdowns. So, 
man, the way you can, you can definitely beat this Jets team through the ground, at least last season you could. We'll have to see if things change this year, but I do expect this Jets team to, you know, defensively not be a team you really worry about. I think this is a good spot for the Bengals. I think this is a spot where the Bengals are going to be able to move the ball down the field pretty effectively. I think they're going to be able to put up points this week. And Joe Mixon definitely has a shot to get into the end zone. I think if he does score a touchdown this week, he's very likely to put up more than 17 and a half fantasy points. And even if he doesn't score a touchdown, he could still get there. Like uh, week one, Joe Mixon did not score a touchdown and he still finished with, you know, how many fantasy points did he finish with? Like 20? Um, week one, yeah, he finished with 21.5 fantasy points and that was without even scoring a touchdown. Like the volume just makes this play so appealing to me. And I think if Mixon has a fairly efficient game on the ground, catches a couple passes, maybe gets into the end zone, he's pretty likely to finish with, you know, more than 17 and a half fantasy points. Um, I, I like Joe Mixon to have a big week this week, but... That's the first play that I'm liking. And then the second play, uh, another fantasy score prop that I'm liking to target. We're going to be going to a quarterback here. Surpri I was surprised to see this line this low, uh, especially with how well this quarterback has played to start the season. And maybe I'm maybe I'm overreacting to two good games. But man, 15 and a half fantasy points for Carson Wentz here. I like taking this one as well, going more, uh, taking Carson Wentz to have more than 15 and a half fantasy points. And like I said, Carson Wentz has been great so far with the Commanders, at least for fantasy. Now as a real-life quarterback, I mean, you, know, you can say whatever you want about Carson Wentz, but for fantasy, he put up 29 fantasy points week one against the against the um, Jaguars, and then week two against Detroit, against the Lions, he put up 28 fantasy points. Now those were two really, really good matchups. I will say this spot against the Eagles is not as it's not as good, um, but I still think this is a spot where Wentz can have some success. It is against his former team. You know he probably he probably wants to play well against his former team. And Carson Wentz is just one of these guys that does have some upside for fantasy. There is still a pretty low floor for Carson Wentz. Like, we have seen Carson Wentz just come out and, like, completely shit the bed. We've seen him have games where he turns the ball over a lot. Um, but he's got rushing upside, which is, you know, obviously not, you know, it's kind of hard to find that for court, most quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, but Carson Wentz does provide a little bit of rushing upside. He's not an elite runner by any means, but... He can go out there and get you 15, 20 rushing yards. If they ever get near the red zone or near the goal line, I mean, Carson Wentz is always a threat to run the ball in for a touchdown. What I'm really banking on here is, you know, 200 yards and two passing touchdowns from Carson Wentz. Like, that would be 16 fantasy points. And I think he can do that here. Um, I think this game against the Eagles does have some sneaky shootout potential. Right now, this game does have one of the higher totals on the slate. A uh, 47 and a half total here. The Eagles are favored by six and a half. So, this could be another game where the Commanders are down and they're going to be trailing and they're going to have to throw a lot. That's been the case so far through their first two games. I mean, Carson Wentz in week one threw the ball 41 times. In week two, he threw the ball 46 times. So he's been throwing the ball a ton. He's had over 300 passing yards in both of their two games. While I don't expect Carson Wentz to throw for under, you know, I don't expect Wentz to throw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns every week. We don't need him to do that. If he goes for you know 200 yards and two touchdowns, that's going to put him over this projection, assuming you know he doesn't throw multiple interceptions. Um, if he does get a, you know some rushing yards, obviously that's even better. I feel like this prop could also be a few points higher. Um, again, like I don't want to overreact to two games, but I definitely think Wentz should be projected for more than 15 and a half fantasy points. Um, especially like if they get behind in this game and Wentz has to throw the ball a ton, he just has an easy path to you know 16 plus fantasy points. I mean, again, like I'm kind of just banking on 200 yards and two touchdowns. Hopefully he can do that here against his former team. Uh, but that's the second prop I'm liking for today. And then the third and final prop, we're going to go to receiving yards. And last time last time I took a, a receiving yard prop on a running back, it did not go well. Um, we took Daryl Henderson's receiving yards, and he literally did not get targeted one time. He got zero targets. He, didn't, he had zero yards. But this is a receiving yard prop that I do like quite a bit for this running back, and it's going to be Clyde Edwards-Alaire. We're going to be taking him to have more than 15 and a half receiving yards. And when you look at you know, Clyde Edwards-Alaire so far this season, he has really been involved in the passing game. Week one, he had 32 receiving yards against the um, Cardinals. And then last week against the Chargers, he had 44 receiving yards. Now, his snap share has not been like super, super high. Um, he's been kind of splitting time with, with Jarrett McKinnon. Now, week one, I guess when they did play the Cardinals, they did blow them out. So, like, I don't think Edwards-Alaire played at all in the fourth quarter in that game. Um, he only played 39% of the snaps in week one. Last week, he played 44% of the snaps. He did get out snapped by McKinnon. Um, they tie, they played the same amount of snaps week one, and then in week two, McKinnon played two more snaps than, than Edwards Alaire. But when you look at his game log and the you know targets, he's still been getting targeted, and he's been getting opportunity. Like when Clyde Edwards Alaire has been on the field, he's been running routes and he's been you know getting carries. Um, he got three targets in week one, had three receptions, obviously 32 yards, and then last week he saw four targets, four receptions for 44 yards. 
you know, if Claudio Zelaire continues to see, you know, three to four targets a game, it's not going to be hard for him to go over 15 and a half yards if he just gets like one or two catches. I mean, he could obviously go over this, he could go over this line with one catch. All he has to do is just get a screenplay with good blocking and he could get 16 yards on one reception. But I think if he continues to see about four targets a game, pretty likely he's going to have at least, you know, two or three catches. And as long as those are fairly efficient catches and he gets some good blocking, I, I like his chances to get 16 receiving yards here. Um, it's a good matchup against the Colts. I mean, the Colts' defense is solid, but, uh, you know, this game's being played indoors, which is beneficial. Um, you know, any time a game's being played indoors, it, you know, I would say the, the chances of a shootout do increase a little bit. You don't have to worry about, you know, weather or anything like that. Um, so I do like this play quite a bit. Clyde edwards helaire to have more than 15 and a half receiving yards. Hopefully the Chiefs continue to involve him in the passing game like they have done to start the season. Um, and I know last year when, you know, when he was healthy, he was involved in the passing game a good amount last season as well. Um, but yeah, I, I like this play as our third and final play to round out our three picks for Sunday. So this is kind of what I'm liking at first look, guys, just taking a first look at the board. I will definitely have some more picks that I like for Sunday. I will share those over on Patreon. If you guys do want to get access to all of my additional prospect plays, any other plays that I'm, that I'm wagering, that I'm putting money on, I will share those on Patreon. You can check that out. Link down below in the description. Um, but as always, appreciate you guys checking out these videos. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you guys have not yet. And also, sign up for Prospects. If you haven't signed up for Prospects yet, make sure to use promo code NOLA. Uh, when you do sign up with my promo code, Prospects will match your first deposit up to $100. Feel free to tail the picks I give out in this video. Feel free to make some other entries for yourself. Check out all the props that Prospects has available. Uh, just make sure to use that code NOLA. Get that deposit bonus when you sign up. Um, good luck this week, guys. Thanks as always for watching the videos, for supporting the channel. Appreciate you guys a ton. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.